and I don't know how this transpired, but like she had somehow when the girl got into the toilet, like it just came out like a fountain and the mom was trying to clean it up. And so she tried to get something from this, like uh, one of the napkin roller things out there. And so like, I see this and I'm just like, why is it on the mirror? Take me away to a secret place. Take me away. away. What is that song called? It's Sweet Escape. Sweet Escape. Sweet Escape. No, it, no, no, no Sweet not, Escape no, is a Gwen Stefani if song. If I could escape, escape. Yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I I'm talking about that. Take me away. Take me away. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. Gonna do it. You know what I'm but talking I know about, chat audience. You know what I'm talking about. Called. Welcome to the Weird Flex. But okay, podcast. Hey guys, uh, please comment below whatever those songs are called. Yeah. Because uh, we are lost. But anyway, hey, this is your Weird Flex Pod thing where we answer your questions. We're the Comedy Weebs Workouts and Advice Podcast. If you'd like to submit a question, email us at weirdflexbutokpodcast at gmail.com. And the music that you hear is by What's My Name on Instagram and SoundCloud. Uh, that was a little jumbled, but you know what? Take me away. Hey. Yeah. What is that play? song called? It's gonna drive it's me crazy. The a entire sweet song. escape. I feel like they're both called the sweet, sweet escape. escape. Well, you remember like that one song? If I could as escape, a, escape. You remember that one song that was like, "It's a bus turning on a rooftop, shout it out, baby, I'm ready to roll, roll. or something, or I'm ready to go, or ready to roll, or something. I'm uh, ready." If it's like, is it like that? I don't think so. Let's see. Or you remember that? Like, there's some I songs that I completely I didn't know just... the lyrics of. That like, cause yeah. I changed them into something different. Like, um, you remember that Gwen Stefani? I, I don't know if it was Gwen Stefani. That, There's like, a lot of Gwen Stefani songs that I know. The one that's like you, I okay for the longest time I'll say you got the song, what I wait, need. Yeah, besides that one, it was like um, you. It was basically saying it was like um, you really love me underneath it all like that's the wrong lyrics underneath it all. yeah yeah that's the wrong okay. lyrics it's like you're really lovely underneath it all and when oh. i heard that that pissed me off because it was like i because when my friend was upset i would always sing that song to him like you oh. really love me love underneath me. it all and it was just it like all. when he was being a sundere so like to me now it's like you're really lovely underneath it. i i don't know it doesn't feel and the you're same. like bullshit yeah, fuck that. My song's Dang. better. Dang. I song. think I had um, a song like that. What's it called? Oh, shoot. What's it called? The one. It's the song um, that goes like really fast, and then it's we like. We were meant to live. And then it's like something about pop it and pull it. We're going down, down, da, 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 going down, swinging. You're number one. Is it by American Hi Fi? Da, 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 cock it and pull it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Oh, Shit. and then that other Gwen Stefani song where it's like, but da, but da, 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 refrigerator, da, 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 cold, da, 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 escape. Like, oh, yeah, like well, the, that's sweet escape. Wee! Yeah, yeah. Wee! Wee! <laughs> I want to get it. Like, remember when Akon get was on everything? I do. Why Why isn't Akon? Is Akon still alive? Jason Derulo. <laughs> Yeah, is Jason Deru- I, I mean, guess is Akon still alive? Episode. Holy fuck, I haven't I heard from him in know. forever. Holy shit, I haven't heard from him forever now that I think about it. Wow. Mr. Lonely. Well, you know who else I haven't heard from? You, Jordan. How are you doing? I'm emotionally a wreck, but I'm fine. Me too! Yeah. High five. There we you did go. it. Yeah, We've we wrecked it. our emotions sufficiently, and now we can live... <laughs> Mediocre lives. Yeah, mediocre lives. Blah, blah, Yay. Blah. Yeah. You but know, one I thing was, I did I, see that you did is that song with Megami. Oh, yeah. Side chest, let's go! Wanna get let's muscles? Go. Come on, show me what you wanna For do. That was a fun. Body. Dude, it was so good. For people who don't know Megami33, she also voices Balma on Team Four Star. She's a good friend of ours. Uh, she is. Uh, she asked me to do a dub sing over uh, for the Onagai Muscle song uh, in live Onagai action. Onagai Muscle. Yeah, in live uh, the the English version, and uh, it was fun. Like I did it. I didn't have to sing. All I had to do was be a hype man. It was like, show me what you can do. 
the can't push it through, keep on pushing through. Anything has changed. Nothing you can't do. And, you know, stuff like that. So it was like really, it was, so it was good. super fun and hype. And then also, on a guy Muscle News, the voice actress for Habiki from the dub is a fan of my work. And that was like a big geek out moment for me because like she made this post and she was like, hey, so I guess it's announced now. I'm doing uh, the dub voice of Habiki. And I was just like, oh, snap, that's a dub voice. And so I just, you know, said hi. And I was just like, hey, I you did a phenomenal job. I want to say that. And she was like, oh, my God. Thank you so much. Like, I've actually been watching the channel and I want to do a good job, especially, and like, one of the things was like, not only because it's a great show, but because of your like work and all that stuff. And so I started geeking out, like, oh my God. Because it's like, it's funny, like, I know so many voice actors. Like, me and Katie know abnormally amount of voice actors between both of us like we know a lot of people on a lot of series it's just like oh yeah, yeah. we're friends with them so it's, it's weird whenever like you know it is sort of like oh we're used to it but there is always that one time when someone voices a character of a character you really love and it's just like oh shit, they're friends with me I'm, I'm friends with that person oh god that's the character i love it. i'm friends with the voice oh, god, so, nice. so it's just like yeah it's really cool it's like a cool little feeling uh and uh yeah also got into this a uh, big debate on discord over who jenny from teenage robot should have hooked up with brad or oh Sheldon. yeah and it was just like well because like if apparently if the series had went on she would have gotten with sheldon or some shit like that and i was like that's some bullshit that's some bullshit she had way better chemistry with brad and it's just like, oh, yeah, well, no, Sheldon, uh, he, his uh, dweeby, pedalizing ass is like, uh, we would have been praying, like, shut the freaking front door. I haven't watched it in a while, but I can already smell the bullshit. Yeah. You remember, you, okay, do you remember the kid with red hair who was the first yeah, person with, she met? Yeah, and he has the little brother. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was Brad. Like, that yeah. was the one that it was like, okay, he was yeah, best be, boy. He, he, he'd be better for him. And then Sheldon was the nerdy kid. Who was like, oh, hey, Jenny, oh, you're so hot. You're so great. Oh, whatever. <laughs> it's just so, yeah. it's like, I just... And she's just like, uh, thanks. Yeah. Well, she kissed yeah. him twice on the cheek because he did nice things for her. But like, she, I think she kissed Brad yeah. once. But whatever. It's yeah. just annoying. Yeah. That annoyed Robots me. and shit. Mm-hmm. That was, oh. that was silly. That was a, well, yes. whatever. That was what I did this week. What did you do? Well, I am eagerly awaiting, uh, we are recording this on a Monday, and tonight at like 8 Central or Eastern Standard Time, they are going to be announcing who made it through to the next round of Now Voice This, and I am feeling hopeful because I thought they were announcing it last week, but what they were actually announcing last week was the um, was the studio that the winner will get to record at, which is Sound Cadence Studio, which I believe Amberly Connors uh, works for, so that's pretty cool, like the winner will get to go there. And I want it so bad. So I'm waiting on that. And mm -hmm. I have a few auditions that I'm potentially waiting to hear back from about. Even though, like, again, when you send in an audition, you just need to forget about it. But I'm just like, mm -hmm. I don't want to forget about it. I can't forget about it. Mm -hmm. ah! So, yeah, that's a, that's where I'm at. Nice. And, yeah, nice. so, yeah, I've just been doing auditions, etc. Getting ready for BronyCon. Yeah, HorseCon. One week it's away. Happen. It's going to happen. One week away. I leave next week. It's going to be wild. Yeah, and we're going to be partying for five days. Five heckin' days. Five heckin' days. And then she gets to meet the squad. And then, like, the that's squad. fun. Yeah, she met. She's been gradually putting, earning her way into our group of people, which is funny because it's just yes. like all the people, we were just like, oh, yeah, I like her from the get go. So that's cool. Like, there's no, Yay. like, certain thing of, like, oh, well, that one needs to grow on me. It's like, no, nah, I like her. I like this person Yay. a lot. Yay. Last it. night I met... Uh, Matt. We were, yeah, we were all like watching ponies in Discord and randomly Matticable. Matticable. Or Matticable. DB Pony. Yeah, he joined in and I was like, oh shit, what up, Matticable? Let's watch some ponies yeah, and shit. That was funny. And he was like, oh, okay. His commentary was very funny. Yeah, Matt is great. He's from New York, so we always talk like this. And I got my <laughs> phone and I fucking hate any type yeah. of pizza that's not your pizza. I noticed. Pizza. There no, it's great because what well, he hates all pizza that's not New York pizza. So it's oh really fun God. to talk. So because like it's just like, yo, man, what the fuck is this year? 
what the fuck is this? You call this oh pizza? <laughs> it's just amazing. I love it. Uh, <laughs> don't order pizza in front of Matt. He'll be like, what the fuck is this bullshit? He's like an shit. Italian person. <laughs> it's just like, I love, well, he is Italian, but it's just like, I love his New York voice so much. It's just so funny to quote, like, hey, yo, it's fucking yes. falling over here. Yo, what are you doing, man? <laughs> it's just so fucking oh my love God. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was fun. <laughs> So I'm excited to meet more people uh, and to watch more ponies. I'm almost done with season six or five. Season five. five. I'm almost on season two six. episodes. Yeah, two episodes. So she's left. about to watch the good stuff from my horse people out there. Oh One yeah, of the better season finales. All the horsey people, uwu. Mm-hmm. Yes. But yeah, speaking of uwu. <laughs> speaking of uwu. Why don't you take us to our first question, Jordan? Okay, sure thing. Click, click. Let me go back to where we're at because we have a lot of fun questions da, today. Da, um, da. Yeah, we have a good, good haul today. I'm excited. We might yeah, make this a longer all episode. Right, I this don't know. One, this one comes from Immortal Groot, and they ask: Besides Immortal being Groot. pieces of crap, what are some personality traits not necess- not necessarily bad people have? that make you either irrationally angry or just angry, like, roll your eyes, whatever. So basically what it's saying is, like, what are some personality traits that, like, people have that just make you irrationally angry? They don't have to be, like, you know, bad people. Like, you know, not like, oh, I go out and, you know, do horrible, atrocious crimes on a daily basis and get away with it. It's like, no, I do this thing, and it's, like, annoying. So why don't you Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can go for, like, the more petty, I guess, type of stuff. So not, like, the super, like... Well, not like, oh, I like to, like, the shit we were talking about last night in the call with the, you yeah. you know, yeah, that disgusting, cra- yeah, not like that, but, yeah. Yeah, not like that, yeah. All right, let's see. Something that makes me irrationally angry. They're not or just, like, roll your people, eyes angry, But it's whatever. just, like, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, when someone exaggerates in a story in a way that, like, you can tell that they're doing it, but they don't seem to care but like but like not not in a way that's like oh you know we're joking here we're having a good time but they're trying to pass it as fact or something to make themselves look good or something like that (laughs) like stuff like like three people like this (laughs) yeah you know what i'm saying to where it's like you know it's fine to an extent like because there's certain situations where like yes i love it be dramatic like it's fun if you know depending on the context like if you're trying to be funny or if you're trying to like tell a fun story that doesn't actually you know like have an impact on somebody. Uh-huh. But if you're trying to make yourself look cool and you're or you're putting somebody else down in the process by exaggerating certain things they did or you did when like when it's a situation where, you know, it's not cool, that type of stuff mm-hmm. can like be kind of like what? Like for example, I think I had a friend sometime in the past that uh, and they're wonderful, you know, they're fine, they're fun, but every now and then they'll tell a story and I'm like, "Come on, like you didn't have to come on and like one example of that was like um i'm trying to think um oh, i'm trying to think of how to phrase it well like they like, were trying to be grandiose like so what happened was um so for example this celebrity was there and i knew this celebrity so i went up to them oh, and they yeah, were like yeah. oh my god this person is my friend and so we had this talk and so i was yeah, personally invited yeah it was exactly invited. like that yeah they were essentially kind of bragging on the fact that like oh my god this celebrity loves me like they love all of this and and like they were just kind of it was to the point where i was like how much of this is true in this context like yes maybe this person like maybe you know this person and maybe mm-hmm. like they like you but the way you're talking about it makes me feel like you're you're over you're over centralizing this. You're not mm-hmm. like you're not being very realistic here. I mean, maybe this person does you know like you and and you had a, a good conversation, but you're getting into a very braggy, unnecessary area, and it yeah. just kind of sometimes irks me. Like it's not like bad enough to where it's like, oh my god, I'm not gonna say anything. But yeah, like, so like for example, chat. Like I'll give you an example uh, with me. Like I'm not, not. I'll just not. I'll, I'll just do an example of exaggerating a story or something like that. So for example, BernieCon 2012. I met Tara Strong briefly, snapped a picture, got a hug, bye bye bye. But then if I wanted to like make this story grandiose, so I was at BronyCon 2012, and Tara Strong knows me. Was like. 
oh my god, are you? And I was just like, yes, I am. Are you Terry Stone? Oh my god, that is fantastic. So I began to talk to her, and we had this long, depth, and sensual conversation. She started telling me how I was just so much superior to her husband and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, well, thank you so much. And so I was <laughs> yeah, just like, especially yes. when you throw in so, things that Yes, and then we yeah. like uh, had this just sensual hug, and she whispered for me to come back to her bedroom. But I was like, no, I can't do that. You have a husband. She's like, oh, he's not home right now. And, uh, you know, it was just a passionate thing. She pecked me on the cheek, and she walked away. And I was just like, I could have slept with Tara Strong. This is all joking, by the way. Don't someone cut this and send <laughs> Nobody this to her like this. That. I literally just said the true story at the beginning of this. They're like, oh, I saw Tara Strong at Broadcom. I asked for a picture, said hi, got a hug. That was it. That was literally the yeah, entire story. Yeah, that's what story. actually happened like, versus the said. fabric. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there can be context where you purposefully. Now, Andrea, let me. I'm joking. Like, yeah. Don't ever oh take my that. God. I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't oh ever send God. that. I love her to death. I love her so oh much. She gosh. is the sweetest person. She but is. But yeah, like that's kind of an example. And I've yeah. actually known people in my life that have done that to an extent. Not like 100% light or anything, but like have taken a situation, multiplied it times 10, and added a few subtle things that didn't happen. But like mm-hmm. just subtle enough to where it's like. You can't quite say it didn't happen, but then you find out later from other sources. That, like, that oh, yeah, they're happen. lying. That, that and it's like, oh, my gosh. Like, because they don't say a flat out lie. They just kind of subtly, like, put Boost little... the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, you know, it can be a very contextual thing, but that is an example of something that kind of irks me sometimes. Like, why? Mm. Like, why? If you had a cool experience, that's cool. Tell me about it. But just tell it like it is. Like... Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say for me, some that, like... It doesn't really make me irrational. It makes me upset, but like, okay, for example, it's like this. Um, so lazy people, if you're lazy and you're just like content with being lazy, I'm super chill with that because it's just like you know, not everyone wants to do a thing like that. You live your life, whatever. Okay, whatever. But if you're like super lazy and you complain about like, oh, stuff in my life is just not going my way because you're lazy, and it's just like, well, why don't you do this? And it's just like. Uh, that's too much work like that starts to annoy me it's just like then stop yeah. bitching about it all right yeah. if you're not gonna change it then shut the fuck up about it. like th- yeah. that what sincerely pisses me off because it's just like all right if you're if you have something that you want to get done do it and then if, if you don't and you're content that's fine like again if you're content with your life yeah, i'm yeah. not the person to be like okay go do it because i don't force my ideals on other people but if you're a person who constantly is just like oh, i'm lazy i'm gonna complain about being like shut the fuck up i i like have like a short-term meter where i will like i have like a little stress ball where i just go like that and i'll leave but if i'm like in a group of people i like and some people some of my friends have seen this happen where i just go okay i've had enough of this you keep saying all this shit but you're not doing anything about it. You keep talking like I'm supposed to, that exonerates you from being like productive with your day. And that shit irritates me. I think it's cause like I I used to be that way myself where I sort of like was very lazy and I complained about not getting stuff done. So I think it's just me seeing other people's laziness in myself. And I'm like afraid of being that person again. So like I I get extra harsh on them. Like, no, no, stop complaining about it. Either keep your mouth fucking shut and get it done or just, you know, do so I like that shit. Oh god, it irritates me so much, Katie. It oh, irritates me. I have me another so one much. that I want to oh, throw yeah. in. Go ahead. And this this one doesn't happen that often, but when it happens, it's sometimes something that I don't know how to respond to. When somebody when there's like a good vibe happening or something and somebody just unnecessarily m- says something or does Negative. something that's Yeah, that's kind of just like uh, you didn't What the have fuck? Why would you say that? Yeah, like okay, yeah, that yeah, like why would re- you have to be mean? Like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I remember, like uh, that happened recently, where I, like um, I, like I saw this happen to a person, like they got a piece of fan art. I think they were like drawn as like Superman or something like that, and then like um, I think they were fighting some creature, and it was just a really nice piece of fan art. And the person was like, "Oh my god, thank you so much! I really appreciate this fan art." And then someone, like everyone else, is like really complimenting the person's fan art, but then someone comes along like. And this is some bullshit. You know damn well you die in the first five seconds fighting the thing. It's just like, that's not the fucking point. It's a piece yeah. of thing. They weren't even saying it in a jokey way. Like it was a friend like busting your balls. It was like, no, it was just, oh man, this is some horse shit. You would die. It's just like, why are you being a fucking negative nasty? I can't stand people like that either. Like people who yeah, just like yeah, yeah. decide to throw something shady or negative in for whatever reason. It just makes me reason. so just, sad. No, it, makes, it doesn't make me sad. It makes too. me pissed off. I will like oh, yeah, it mostly makes me mad, but it also just saddens me sometimes because like, 
Because, mm. like, I and, – and also afraid sometimes because, like, you never know if somebody's going to do that to you. And, no, like, if someone does it to me, me, I'll call your ass out. I'll just, like, yeah, yeah, look, yeah. I'll be, like, um, why are you okay, – th- th- this literally happened to me a couple days ago. It's just, like, okay, why was that necessary? Hmm? All right? So, like, literally yeah. no one else said this. You were the only person to bring this up. Well, is there something going yeah. on with your life? Is there it something you're, like, going on? It can also depend on the levels, though, because there are yeah. things called microaggressions where they don't necessarily take it to a 100% aggressive place, but they might make, like, a subtle comment, but it's a not enough. A backhanded compliment or something? Yeah, it's yeah. not enough to warrant, like, a full, like, what the fuck. So you would look crazy if you responded with something like that, but it is enough oh, to, make you, to make you feel bad. Like, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like, because especially when it's on social media. But, like, oh, yeah, in exactly. real life. In real life, it's definitely frustrating. Like, I've had, um, and I'm not saying names or whatever, I've been at, like, family reunions and stuff where, like, I have family members from, like, another side of my family or whatever that are sometimes just kind of mean for no reason. Like, they'll just say something that they know is hurtful, and they'll storm off or do something, and I'm like, what is happening? I just wanted some broccoli. Like, why did you have to be mean? Like. Like, and, and with family, it can also be very difficult because like, you know, those are the, those are the people you got and you can't really like, to an extent, you can't really like get rid of them. Like, yeah. Cause, you know, cause if, if there's a, if there's toxic family members, you can 100% be like, no, like I don't have to put up with your shit. But sometimes again, it can be like a micro level to where they're not doing something quite bad enough to warrant a what the fuck, but they are doing something that makes you feel bad. And you're just yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Why? So, me, I, I, yeah. I understand that completely. Cause like, I, like there's sometimes that happens in my house or like a family or like that. But like, I'm very much at a point now where I guess i like, you know, what's funny is I guess that again, to go back to the heartbreak thing, when I got my heart yeah. broken, I guess I just lost the filter of where like, I'm not taking shit anymore where I just go like, yeah, yeah no, no, I'm not taking that. I don't care who you are. I don't care what the, whatever it's just like, I'm not taking this. I'm not putting up with it. I don't give a fuck. Like I just, I won't do that. Like I'm not, I, I, I cause I think that's something that irks me is someone trying to talk down to me like someone's like trying to yeah oh yeah you're trying yeah. to no it's like no no i'm a grown-ass man you don't talk down to me that way i don't give a fuck who you are it's just like yeah that's annoying but and i it, guess uh, one more that i'll say that mm-hmm. it's kind of an irrational but rational thing and it might just be a girl thing but when like when i'm like hanging out with zach or something and like when it comes to like paying for dinner or whatever when somebody just assumes like he'll pay for it yeah, like, stuff like that. And, like, you know, there are times when, like, you know, he'll treat me or I'll, like, get him a little something and it'll be okay. And it's not that I don't like it when somebody treats me to something. Like, of course I would love free food. Like, what the fuck? But, like, it – I don't like when – um, or even if I hear, like, a friend – telling a story about like yeah i went on a date and i didn't even reach for the check because of course he's going to pay when i hear people say stuff like that i'm like eh. like mm-hmm. it makes me uncomfortable like when you put certain expectations as just the standard and those expectations are just like this person has to buy me x or y or like oh like in in my family like uh, maybe it's just straight southern culture but whenever i hear jokes about like the old ball and chain i'm like are straight people okay oh, like the old ball you, and should, chain. you shouldn't feel that way about someone you love like is is that how you feel do you do you need me to call for help like those are situations where i just get very like what the fuck like it makes me it makes me feel weird and bad and uncomfortable not enough to necessarily be like how dare you but enough to make me like eh. mm-hmm Mm. Yeah. No, so I that's, feel you. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. But but a lot of people are crap out there. But we have fans who love <laughs> us from different places. Uh, you segue in Jordan. Segue. Is that like what you're doing? Subway segue. Wow. Like that Subway commercial had no fucking... That was a fucking genius <laughs> was, yeah, Subway exactly. commercial. Yeah, it like that hilarious. Subway commercial. Like, it's just like, you're going to be segwayed Subway without a no fucking context. It's just a movie. <laughs> a movie about nothing to do with sandwiches. It was so Why? Just, Why? There was no it's, reason it's for so it. so stupid. But yeah, uh, uh, this next question is a very nice email that somebody sent us. So from again, Ireland, anyone... you got to read it with an accent. Yeah, it's from Ireland. Oh God, I'm gonna try to do an Irish do accent. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to do yeah, it. Yeah, come on, top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you, laddies. <laughs> yes, do it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, again, reminder: if anybody wants to send in a question, please email us at weirdflexbutokpodcast at gmail dot com. Hi guys. 
Loving your work, you guys, and special hello from Fan in Ireland. Uh, I can't do it. I yeah, you can. <laughs> I have to backstory. listen to like five minutes of somebody speaking Irish. Let me try. Let me try. Place. Okay. Get backstory. Recently, I matched with someone on Tinder. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know those people you just click with and you go from small talk to talk. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. Oh <laughs> We're so sorry. We are uh, terrible. Okay, I'm just going to start. Okay, you know what? I'm going to make fun of myself. I'm going to read it in a southern accent. Yeah, Abilama. All right. Hi, guys. <laughs> Loving the work, you guys, and a special hello from a fan in Sound Ireland. Like Apple Bloom. <laughs> yes. Bit of a backstory. Recently, I watched, I matched with someone on Tinder, and you know those people you just click with, and you go you to small like talk, <laughs> to talking about how much of a weave you both are. It got to the point where both of us were chatting and texting every day, and after almost a month of almost of just texting, we finally got to meet in person. Recently, sound like old that boom now. <laughs> <laughs> Reason why it took so long, cause she lives an hour away from me in a strict home life. Great fun times were had, and we ha- we'd made plans for a future meetup. Recently, she has decided to take a break from the internet cause of mental health, and she needed to take time to discover and make peace with some things from her past. She told me that I didn't do anything wrong, not to worry, and that I, if I need her, she'll respond. My question is. Do I just give her the space she needs and just wait until she makes contact? Or just send her a funny vid involving llamas, her favorite animal, every other day just as a pick-me-up? Looking forward to hear from you two. Keep up the great content. Love and smiles from your Irish Filipino fan, Joey. Oh, you should have did a Filipino accent then. That would I, I cannot do a Filipino <laughs> yeah. accent. I am uh, not the best at accents. Well, I have no idea what the question was because you had to be a fool during it. Sorry, oh my anyway. God. Yeah, so the basis of the question is um, him and this girl that met online and whatnot. We're having a good time chatting, oh, and that talking. was great. But um, I don't know if they ever physically met, but uh, she apparently needed to go offline for a little bit to uh, to deal with some mental health stuff, and she was all like hey, I just need some space right now to deal with this stuff. But if you need me, you know, I'll answer. But I just need space right now. So what he's wanting to know is, do I give her the space she needs and just wait until she makes contact or just send her a funny video involving llamas every other day? So he's wondering if he should, like, keep up subtle content to remind her, hey, I'm still here, or just respect the fact that she says, I don't want to talk right now because, will that mean maybe that they're going to just get more distant and it'll end. And... I think you should take a little break. When someone says give them space, they probably don't want you in their, like, inbox every day. It's it's true. Yeah, because it's just like, don't bother uh, me. Because, like, you know, here's the thing. Like, because I'm going from, oh, Jax has some experience with this, like, where... I have experience with somebody saying they needed space, and I... It was a bad situation, because, like... When I hear that, when I hear I need space, what I hear is you want to break up, or at least that's what, that's what had happened back then, when um when I was in a relationship and they were like I just need some space, uh, and even though it was like a long distance thing, so it was like what do you mean by that? So I actually kind of relate to the situation, except me and this person were in like a longer term relationship when they said this, so it was like a little different, but but from my experience on what I did versus what in hindsight I feel like I should have done. Mm -hmm. Um, what I did was I like freaked out and I was like, oh my gosh, like obviously he wants to break up with me and like he doesn't love me anymore. And maybe that was true. But either way, regardless of what was true, I should have just been like, okay. But the fear of him being like, um, or of him just never contacting me again and then not formally breaking up with me because that's like kind of what I would have wanted. It, it drove me to where like every now and then. Well, also, it didn't help that I had to reach out for him to him for other stuff that, like, just needed to be discussed in general because there was, like, some other stuff going on, too. But um, I would just feel so anxious and nervous, like, any time talking to him, which wasn't a good situation to be in in general because he didn't quite make it clear what the space was about or what needed to be happening. And so I was just kind of, like, constantly anxious and not understanding what I needed to do. And so every now and then I would just be like, hey, like, you know, after like a week would pass, I'd be like, hi, and we're still dating. I don't understand what we are. So I wish he would have communicated to me more clearly. But I also wish that I would have just been okay with letting go if that's how it needed to be let go. And so, yeah, I guess my answer 
in that sense is even though it sucks and what you want to happen is for her to clearly state this is how I'm feeling this is what's going on and this is specifically what I need so I need you to do specifically this and I will feel good that's not how life works sadly I wish it did but it doesn't and what needs what needs to happen and what sucks to admit needs to happen is if she says she needs space she could be feeling a multitude of things some maybe having to do with you, some maybe not having to deal with you. And and, it, and most of the time, it doesn't really have to do with you. Um, but if she says that, you just need to be like, okay. And if she can't quite tell you specifically what that means, like if you're just like, so what does that mean? Does that mean we only talk this much or what? Like, what does it mean? If she doesn't know, it sucks. And I know you want to know what it means, but sometimes she might not even fully know either. And so you just kind of have to go with it and it'll hurt and it'll suck. And if like she never messages you again, like maybe give it like, I don't know, like a month or two. And then maybe you reach out like, hey, like it's been an extended period of time. I just need a, I need a something like, so that's kind of a weird way to answer the question, I guess. But from my experience, even though it sucks, you just have to go with it and if she wants to make an effort she will and if she doesn't she won't and no amount of saying hey like what's going on is going to help with that yeah so don't give them I say don't uh be over clingy don't be overly clingy because that's one of the most least attractive things. and you said you two aren't really dating you just met right so like yeah i would say just like don't be overly clingy and like sp spam like if she says like i need space don't like keep messaging her every other day like hey look at this hey yeah. look at this hey look at this because that can be like annoying like i told this guy i need space now he's just constantly bombarding me so it's just like yeah, yeah just like do it if she wants to contact you you can like i would say honestly like every couple weeks or something like that just be like oh i found this uh llama thing it would be cute i thought you might yeah like it. so like something what, like that yeah because what this could potentially mean is she might not necessarily know what she means by space she just knows that she needs to be with herself for a little bit we're not quite knowing fully what that means so she's not necessarily saying like i just need a week off she's just saying i need to feel like i'm in a place again where i can be or do whatever it is that I want to be or do with you and so and since you guys weren't necessarily that close to begin with that could just mean you know she's gonna go do her own thing and like you just do your own thing and um you know maybe send her a meme like if a week or something passes but don't like initiate like stuff like you used to and maybe let her be the initiator and if after a long significant amount of time passes you maybe want to ask a question I feel like that would be okay, but but at this point in time, you just kind of have to let time take over here and not necessarily the intricacies. It sucks because time is the only thing that can really deal with these situations. And when I've never been in a position where I've been a person saying I need space because, again, because my mindset around the concept of it was very, like, unsure, and it just means that, like like this person is figuring stuff out and they don't know how to communicate it to you or to themselves and it sucks because you want to be able to help somebody or be in a position where they know what they need and sometimes that's not how it works and i'm so sorry you're going through this yeah same buddy it's okay though yeah it's okay man you're good just let it be yeah. for a bit and then like if it works perfect if it doesn't hey hey you, you got this. yeah and if you care about them and like and they know that you care about them then they're gonna come back around and like you have your whole life to be friends with somebody you have your whole life to this or that and honestly if you feel like it gets to a certain point where you're just like man I don't want to sit around and spend my time like wasted waiting on somebody when I could be living my own life like Life is so short. It's very long, but it's so short. If you just need to be like, all right, my interpretation of this is I'm just going to move on and do my own thing. And if you come back, cool. But if you don't, I'm already setting a new path for myself. Do that too. Like, I know it's sounding so drastic, but it's it's your life and you just have to do what makes you feel good. Don't sit there and wait if you don't think it's coming back, even if she's amazing and awesome and whatnot. You just need to let her do her thing. And if she wants you, she'll 
she like she'll reach out yeah yeah agreed very well put yeah uh i feel like i was like jumbled on that one but man i i've i've been where you are and i really appreciate or you know to an extent but i really appreciate you reaching out and sending us an email and it's so nice to know that we have fans from all over that listen yeah. to my bad southern accent even though i'm from alabama exactly <laughs> apple bloom yeah and uh, exactly hope you feel apple better. bloom what do you mean sugar cube <laughs> That's not Applejack. How dare you? I bet. Okay. I bet if I worked on it for like a week, I could probably get a good Applejack. I just yeah, have to work sure. on it. I you gotta, you gotta get, get that deep voice. You need to get that deep. Gotta voice get that deep you, voice. Unless you're season one Applejack, who had a higher pitch voice. Season before. one Applejack. Yeah. Apple Bloom. <laughs> you sound more like Apple Bloom still. Yeah. <laughs> I really like Apple Bloom. Yes. But we know you can probably. Of yeah. Go ahead. Something. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of something. All right. This comes from Curtis. And it says, when and how often is it okay to tell your friends they pissed you off? For example, my friend roasted me pretty hard in front of others well, with something personal because we were having a roast off. So they were roasting each other. Okay. I got mad and told him and we wa- talked it out. But sometimes he still says or does things that irritate me. And sometimes I don't know if I'm justified to bring it up because I don't want to be that guy that brings it up too often. That makes me appear like a baby. My question is to y'all, when a friend makes you mad, how often do you tell them or how often do you just let it go? All right. So I'm going to start this baby off. Yeah, All right. So first off, off you need to. Um, because there's a difference between like bringing up stuff that's valid and then just being uh, a person who's offended over everything. So for example, like one time I had a friend, I'm not friends with this person anymore. Cause like I, I had got sick of this. So like, uh, we were, um, they, they said like, Oh, uh, a joke yeah. you made, like uh, offended me and pissed me off. I was like, Oh God, I'm so sorry, whatever. But then like throughout the months of knowing this person, it became clear that they just were a type of person who just got offended over everything. Like for instance, me and my friends were watching one of our favorite series, the boondocks, which is a very racial and sensitive show, but it's one of the best shows on adult swim. One of my favorite shows ever created. And it was just like, there was a funny scene and stuff like that. When we were talking about it. And then like, they were like, I can't believe you would laugh at that. That's not funny. It's just like, it's a parody and it's a joke and it's and then like it was stuff like that where it started to irritate me because it's just like now you're saying I can't laugh at a show that's intentionally parody it's not taking this seriously it's just doing this like that that like really irritates me versus like oh if you have a problem we can bring it up like so for example if someone like um you said someone he roasted you you guys are having a roast off and it was just sort of like that and then he got personal with it and you're like okay and you talked it out like you have to look at the situation and go like okay um they said this to me I was offended when they sent this to me and it's like, oh, well, I'm sorry. Like that was an offensive thing. I apologize, dude. But then there are some times where it's just like, bruh, all right, I, I don't know what to tell you. All right. This is how we are as people. This is how we talk and communicate with each other. Like, for instance, like we, we had like, um, I'm not going to say any names or anything like that, but like our group of friends, like this is why I'm so grateful for our group of friends. Like we all have a very specific, like uh, type of personality. If we ever have like anything uh, brought up it's just like hey i didn't think that was cool then it's just like oh okay well then we'll be brought up again like for example if someone who's my friend makes me upset and i'm like okay they're making me upset they're like okay let's say like i don't know, katie made me upset about some random ah. stuff. and i was just like i all i would do is like because remember staying calm is a superpower if you're calm about it, it's just like all right katie i really do not appreciate that all right can we stop yeah Thank you. And then that's it. And then that's it. And then it's just like, yeah. we would have a talk afterwards and just be like, okay, yeah, like that's, we, we talk, we like, because we, we do this. Like we have something wrong with each other. We talk it out. But if it's just like, yeah, yeah. if it was just like, Katie, I really don't appreciate you saying those stupid memes and ooh, ooh every single time. And I generally <laughs> meant that. Like, I don't appreciate every time you say ooh, it makes you look like an idiot. And I do not appreciate you <laughs> acting like a fool. And I was like genuine about that. Then it's just like, no, there's something wrong with me in that scenario. Because yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's, 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 it's silly. Like there's some shit like that. So, honestly yeah, think of like shit, yeah. the situation because like all right for instance there are sometimes there are situations that you look at and go all right am i justified in being angry here like for example i'll give you an example there was something happened a couple years ago where like i had helped a friend out with something and um i thought i was gonna get like a shout out or credit for it but i didn't get any shout out or credit for it and so like part of me was like 
I mean, it was their stuff, so I can't really be upset that I helped them with their thing for their, like, work. But it was just, like, a part of me was like, well, I sort of did want the shout-out. And then I kept, like, thinking about it over and over. But eventually yeah. I just, like, I let it fizzle out and burn away. And it's just, like, it wasn't that big a deal to me now. And, like, I'm focused on my success stuff, too. But it was just, like, something back then where I was, like, really thinking, like, should I say something? Like, I don't appreciate that or something like that. It just, it, it, it's stuff like that you have to really, really, like, think about. Like, make sure you're not being petty or if, or if it's just, like, if you bring it up, Will it cause more problems than you consume? Now, I like that. For example, there are sometimes there are certain things where you notice someone is a piece of shit, and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna bring this up, and if they react a certain way, then they're a piece of shit, and it's just like, okay, well, yeah. you're out of my life. Fuck you. All right, I don't yeah. need you. But if it's like a friend who's like a like you like look back and like, okay, that was a friend and stuff like that, and it's just like, okay, I can let that go. But if it was something super serious, and yeah, like. Yeah, I would say, like, bring it up regardless of what it is. Like, if someone does something, like, really say that, you bring that shit up, and if they react a certain way, fuck them. Fuck them. That's what yeah, I'm Yeah, yeah, and I think one other perspective here, because you mentioned you were having a roast off, and I think I've been to roast before for, with friends that are personal. I've never personally put myself into the position to be roasted because, like, I don't think there's certain aspects that I'd be comfortable completely just people putting on blast about me, and I think it's okay if you have certain things that you're just like, look, like, you know, I'll talk about these things with close friends and like stuff, but I don't want it to be entertainingly displayed in that way. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't vibe with me. And there might be some people that do like that and that's fine. But there are certain aspects of my life that I don't want to be entertainment for others. And like, it's okay to have those feelings. It doesn't make you weak or like, it doesn't make you not confident in yourself. If you don't want all of your life to be entertainment for somebody, that doesn't mean that you're, you don't love who you are or whatever. There's a really and great so, pony episode on that too. Oh, oh fuck. yeah. We, I mean, we haven't oh, got yeah. to it yet. Sorry. I'll yeah. Keep my but let me, up. yeah. Um, so when I went to the roast and stuff, there were people that were kind of doing it for the first time, et cetera. And they would say very, very specific things that like in the moment they were like, Oh my God, that's so funny and stuff. But I noticed later that it, it seemed to have a bit of an impact on them. And I think especially when you're putting yourself out there in a new way, in that kind of format where you're kind of making it entertainment, don't let your pride make you think, well, you know, I shouldn't feel upset about it. If it if something upsets you, have a conversation with yourself and say, hey, like, maybe it went too far and maybe I don't like that. Even though I did put myself in this position and I did ask for this, that doesn't mean yet you, your feelings are valid and that you're not allowed to feel how you feel. But make sure that you just keep the perspective of when you talk to that friend about it. Like, hey, yes, I know that this and this is valid and... I did create a situation where maybe you were allowed to say these things and, you know, that's that's okay, but it doesn't change the fact that, you know, this actually kind of hurt. Maybe I don't want to do this again. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, you know, we were trying this out, but if you don't like that, we don't have to do it again. Like, you know, maybe ask those types of questions too because just because you put yourself in a position to maybe have people say things about you, that doesn't mean that those things won't hurt. And if they hurt... You don't necessarily have to say, like, well, I'm not justified to feel hurt. If you feel hurt, you fucking feel hurt. It's gonna happen. But you can understand, like, when to let things go. Like, it's like Jordan's example. I've also had examples in my life where it's like, you know, that thing did kind of hurt. And maybe I'm not justified to feel hurt. But it did. But I'm not going to say anything because X, Y, or Z. And, you know, it's not big enough of an issue to where I'm going to make a thing out of it. But like, and you know, sometimes there might be things where you do need to make a thing out of it. It can, it very much depends on how you feel and stuff. But like, yeah, just maybe have those conversations with yourself and understand how you're feeling and mm -hmm. don't be ashamed of feeling those things so that you can move past them. Because if you accept like, oh man, I feel jealous or I feel upset or I feel sad, then you can be like, oh, well, I know why. So now we can avoid these situations so I don't have to. Like, so we don't have to do that again. Like, it's not bad. Don't push them away. Embrace them. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So just yeah. And like, always make yes, your opinions yeah. clear because you don't want to. There are some things you shouldn't let fester. Like for instance, I sometimes I have friends say like, um, "Oh, they they made me angry here," and I'm just like, "I don't know if I should bring it up." And I'm just like, "Yeah, I think you should talk to them about that." And just like, don't let it fester. Like that's the best way. Like don't let it fester. You don't yeah. want to let something like that like fuck up your friendship. So yeah, but like again notice you don't want to be that person who's just like upset about everything and over because those people yeah. are very tedious. Humble yourself definitely. Yeah. And, and it sucks because I can, I can also relate to that mindset of like being 
I don't want to be that girl that brings up this, this, or this. And honestly, I don't get offended a lot. There's like only a few situations I can think of in my life where I felt like, okay, you know what? I need to have a conversation about this. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, it's fine. Like generally, the things that get me upset are so small that it's like, oh, okay, it's whatever. But if it gets to like a medium level, I'm able to just have a conversation and then boom, it's done. There's only been a few situations where I've been like, I need to have a conversation and that conversation maybe didn't end very well. Mm -hmm. And like, it sucks that you have to maybe have those moments in your life, but at the same time, life isn't fair sometimes. And it's not always going to be everybody loves me and we all vibe perfectly and have no differences and la da 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 da. It's not going to be like that. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're humble and, and make sure that have that you have conversations with yourself and people that you love and trust about, you know, where your intentions are, where you're, your feelings are about something before you bring it up depending on how it's making you feel and if it's eating you up inside and you need to you need to have a conversation that is okay just make sure that you're coming from a place of humility and a place of understanding if you can mm-hmm. yeah yeah agree and there isn't there isn't like a number there isn't like a number that's too often and it sucks because like mm-hmm. you wish there was like i was saying on that ireland question you wish that it could be very specifically laid out like all right here's what i'm feeling exactly verbatim here's how many times you can do this and that and, da, 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 da. and sometimes humans just don't work that way sometimes mm-hmm. life isn't a chart that you can just mark a list mark with a sharpie Sometimes it's just, yeah, it would be really cool because then you could just compartmentalize everything and not have to feel something on a day you don't want to feel it. But you know what, man? Life ain't that easy. But that's why you need to have. Unless you're a robot. Unless you're a robot. A teenage robot. Yeah, you should have got with fucking Brad. (laughs) A teenage robot. Life. (laughs) Should have got with Brad, Jenny. Now you're fucking Luffy. There was, this is like (laughs) off topic, but there was a song in in the teenage robot universe that I obsessed over for years not in like a way of like I actually liked it or whatever but like it was just so catchy I would just sing it and wouldn't sometimes remember what it was it was like a Mickey Momo is a Mahomuki a Mickey Momo is a lemonade like that is that the Japanese like, episode where she was speaking Japanese the entire episode I think so and she was like, like, like don't like, Mr. Rabato like there, it was like a commercial and like the I think there were some robots or something that were about to capture Brad, and then Brad was like, uh, a Mickey Momo is a Mahomuki. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was so catchy. And I don't remember the full context of it. I just sure, remember I singing it all the show. time. It was a good show. W- but yeah, partially. there's our answers. Uh, best of luck, Curtis, with all of the things that you're feeling. Yep, that- and if you want to, remember, like I would say, just go fight it out. Fighting out makes you close. Yeah, go friends. punch a wall. Yes. No, go punch each other. Maybe not a wall. Yeah, go punch each other. You'll feel better afterwards. Trust me, you're boys. You're boys. You'll get over it. It's genetics. It's what we do. (laughs) All right, next question. All right. Oh, yeah, next question. Um, Hey, Jordan and Katie, my name is Jarrett. I'm 392 pounds. Hi, Jarrett. And I'm trying to lose weight. So I was wondering the best exercises to lose weight. From Stale Meme Lord. They probably haven't listened to another episode of the pod, but it's fine. Uh, just here. Okay, I'm gonna give my answer, and then Jordan, you can give your answer. No, you know what? I'm, I want you to my- impress me, Kay. I because you've known right. me for a year now, so you should know all the steps. So I want to well, hear what you. Well, my learned. answer that I was gonna give was go watch all of Jordan's videos done. <laughs> oh well, yeah, that's good. So are you impressed, Jordan? That's my advice. I, you're yeah, just you're calorie lucky count. I love you. Shit. Eat, all right. Eat yeah. healthy <laughs> and uh, intermittent fast, and then exercise four times a week. Five times a week. Every Ooh, day. Five times Every day. Week. Every day. That's what I do. But Every you day to, like... is leg day. <laughs> Every day is leg day. Every day is leg day. Can't spell legendary that leg day. Again, <laughs> just all you got to do. Uh, I have a whole, like Katie said, um, go on my channel. And uh, it, oh, actually, go on YouTube's toolbar and type in Jack's Blade Three Leg Stool of Fitness. I tell you the three leg stool like um, that you need to get mastered for any fitness goal, which is mastering your sleep, mastering your training, and mastering your nutrition. So if you master those three things, yes. no matter what you want to accomplish, you can. And I have a whole series dedicated to helping you master all that stuff. So go to my channel. Hell and you can yeah! See it. So booyah. I know that like we've answered questions about that stuff before, 
but mm-hmm. like whenever we get them I'm just like oh I want to help them out even yeah. though like the answers are pretty straightforward I guess yeah it's cool like last episode of uh, Don Brew I actually was really happy with the uh, last episode because like it was episode um no, I mean, my, for episode of my series, Personal Choice React, because, like, um, they said something in Dombra that I just did not agree with, like, when they got to yeah. the nutrition part, and I was just like, oh, well, that will hurt a lot of people, so I gotta just fucking do it, so I, like, got out a whiteboard, and I actually went all teacher mode, and then my yeah. personal trainer reacts to how heavy are the dumbbells you lift episode three like i have this whole like segment of where i'm like talking like a teacher on a whiteboard explaining like no this is how you want to go this if this is the diet you're following then you got to make sure you're doing this if you're trying to make sure a diet is working for you these are the steps you do no matter what and then it was it was really fun i highly recommend checking it out check out my series personal trainer reacts to how heavy the dumbbells you lift it's really fun i love doing it i love fitness that's all i'm good at so yeah, essentially this question was just put in here to advertise Jordan. Go watch his videos. <laughs> Yay. Uh, huh. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Why don't you take us to our next question? Okay. The next question comes from Katie, but not my <gasps> Katie. Yeah, it's an IE, IE Katie. So uh, get 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 stepping up, man. Like, Katie. So her real name is Caitlin. I'm betting. <gasps> Oh, wow like okay. imposter all right let's see is there ever a time you should stop being supportive of a friend's goals if they aren't doing anything to act on them for example i've had a friend since high school who had told me a certain goal they have but every time i bring it up to them they always have an excuse of why it's not getting done this has been going on the last eight years since i've known them and i feel like i should give them a reality check like Jax gave his friend a couple weeks ago <laughs> yeah any thoughts love your work oh my god yep i i know your thing katie katie i know wait how, uh, yep. how do i specify like i'll call you miss johnson i'll call her katie all right okay. so katie okay. let me okay. tell you something katie all right first ooh ooh katie so (laughs) so, okay so anyways um i have a friend who's the exact same way uh again i'm not sure if he'll listen to this but like i'm trying not to put him on the blast but um i have a friend i love him to death and he's very talented at uh two things i will say he's extremely talented at uh he's incredibly talented at martial arts because he's been doing it for a long time so he's a black belt master and he's a great martial artist he's also an incredible rapper like a, a phenomenal freestyler like little dicky style nice. like, not actually better than little dicky like he does i must say well i wouldn't say he's a phenomenal rapper like a freestyler like he's actually yeah, like yeah, legit yeah. with his stuff That's but awesome. he is su- he's super passionate about a lot of things but um, he cannot pick one thing. So, for example, I'll give you an example. So, um, no, actually, I'll give you, like, several examples because, like, he still calls me with trying to start a YouTube channel now and stuff like that. And I love him to death. And I'm always trying to help him. But, like, I sometimes I got to, like, go, you need to be serious with it. Because, like, um, when we were in high school, uh, he, he had this goal of, like, all right, I want to become – uh, the next UFC world champion. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, you can do that. But I only want to use traditional martial arts. Okay, yeah, that's good, man. But first, I want to go to college full time. All right, and I want to go in the military and learn all this stuff. Okay, I also want to take my body and make it look like Bruce Lee. Uh huh. And then bulk up to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. And then I want to get down to like a uh, Robin Shaw, Luke Kang. Uh huh. And it's just like he has all these ideas for himself and now he's trying to like do a youtube channel and i'm like i want to help him but it's just very much a thing of you have to pinpoint what you want to do all right you can't yeah. just you have like a lot of great ideas and i true I, and i don't ever want to tell a friend like i don't believe in you in a sense like that but it's just like you need to pick what you want to do and actually be disciplined to do it because if you're not like actually working towards it because every time i brought it up after like so how's this getting done it's just like like they said with their friend, it's just an excuse of why it's not getting done. And I feel yeah. like that is like not a good thing because it's just like, I want to help you, but you're not helping yourself. You see what I'm saying? And I know you keep yeah. saying, and then like, they'll bring up stuff like, well, life is going this way for me. I'm like, okay, dude, like I know all about like making things work. Right. I worked at Burger King for six years. They're yeah. full time. I did college full time. And I still did YouTube videos on the side as a hobby, as a side hustle. And then my yeah. side hustle blew up. 
because I was passionate and focused on it no matter what. Like I focused on that thing I wanted to do. So this whole yeah. thing of like you saying, I want to do all these things, you should have focused on one and now it's getting up there and it's just like, okay, you probably can't do the MMA and UFC stuff and all that stuff like right now, but you can do like this YouTube thing. You just have to focus on doing this thing one at yeah. a time. And like, you don't necessarily, up. yeah, you don't necessarily have to limit like the amount of things that you want to do, but you do have to take certain ac- increments of time and effort consistently towards them because like one piece of advice that i've gotten before just on twitter is like the way to consistently um work on projects is to always have two or three projects going on so when you want to procrastinate on one project you can work on the other project but Mm. you again have to be consistently doing work of some kind towards insert goal like Mm. you can have a bunch of goals and it doesn't make you a failure if you're only working towards two of them right now. Like, if you're working towards two goals, that's more goals than person over here is working towards. That's exactly. awesome. So, like, yeah, just consistently, like, go at your own pace. You have your own journey. But pick pick one or two things, maybe three things, heck, that you want to consistently put in work towards. Maybe not, like, like this day is dedicated to this project or this day is dedicated to that or half of this day to this, half to that. Or, like, you know, like, I have a free hour right now. I'm just going to do some of this. Like, like you have to either figure out a schedule or or at least like how much did I get done towards this goal this week? Like yeah, something exactly. like that. So, for example, like a, a, a way I heard this that always stuck with me greatly is like, let's say um, wherever you are right now, you're going to try and drive to, you know, I don't know, Canada or something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let's say like whatever, like whatever state, if you're in the States right now and you're like, oh, I'm going to drive to Canada. Now, let's say you're just going to drive there, but you don't have a map. And it's just like, okay, I'm just, you may eventually get there, but you're going to get all of these like loopholes and shit and all this stuff that you didn't have a clear plan of where to get to. But if you have like a GPS or a map, then you know exactly when you're going to get there at a certain time and date because you're like focusing on gradually getting there. It may take a while to get there, but you still know like, oh, I'm, I'm going the right direction. But if you don't have any yeah. like thing, you're just, um, it's like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, it's just like, if you don't have a goal, you're just like, it's like a plane that's in the air just floating. And it's just like, oh, I don't know where to go. I'm just yeah. hovering. It's just like, yeah, whatever. Or a boat just in the ocean, just hovering. You don't know where to go. So it's just like, you, you, you could be going places, but you're just, Floating, so you gotta make sure you gotta you have pick a, goal. a direction. It yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be north, south, east, or west. It can be north, south. It can be east, west. Like it could mm-hmm. be, like it can be a little combination of two other things. Because like I am, I am the type of person that never just has one thing going on. Like I'm always putting my feelers into something else, so that when that thing takes off, I can be like, cool. I can utilize this for that. Like one thing I haven't really talked about um, publicly yet, but in the next few weeks, I am starting another podcast. Oh really? Um, With who? How dare you uh, cheating on me? You're cheating no, no, on no. me. It will not wow. interfere with ours. Okay. <laughs> oh wow! Um, Look what you're hearing now, Cash. Yeah, you're she hearing just it blindly saying here. she's cheating on me. She is well, cheating. On, how dare you? How dare you? It is not. I was it is your not a podcast first. that that um just has. It's not very a, similar to ours. Um, I can tell you is more. Is there a black off. man on it? No. <laughs> now that you're telling me. I can tell you more details you. when okay, we're not fine. recording, but I'm, I'm starting another podcast because the po- the stuff that I've learned in terms of like how to edit the audio, like all the put together stuff on this podcast, I'm going to use it towards the other thing because like it sounds like a fun project. I, I don't think I'll get like paid or anything from it, but it's something that I think could be really fun to do and has like a lot of potential. And so utilize what you're doing now to build towards other things and also always consistently have something you're working towards <laughs> i'm sorry jordan yeah you left me no i'm hurt no i'm not no, leaving you left i'm gonna me. record fine. it on another day uh-huh okay sure our podcast will be in no way uh-huh. touched by this other podcast in fact i might promote this podcast mm-hmm. on that podcast mm-hmm. okay Okay. I just hadn't said anything yet because I'm still getting the art made and I'm still getting the jingle commission, but I've got my co-host and we've got our channel and the idea. And like, Who is he? I can't tell you. And it's not a he, actually. It's a they. <sighs> Fine. And when Fine. I when I say they, I just mean that this person identifies as they, with they, them pronouns. Oh, okay. Okay, fine. 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 Be that way. <laughs> Take your girl. <laughs> you know what? 
I don't need this podcast anymore. I have two podcasts no. too. I have Tune Class. You do. You actually do it. You already have like yeah, but podcasts. I had them first, and I made time for you, my favorite. I know. And how and dare you? This is still my favorite. I just wanted to start this. New I know, one. but everyone's what, listening to us. Arguing. I see what happens. Look, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna be like, you know, this podcast is so much more fun. I'm gonna like just do this podcast. You know, actually, I this is what that would never people happen. listening. You're about to hear like a good thing. You know, what, Katie, I, I've meant this. You're one of my best friends, and I love you. So Aww. go be happy, and I, I want love you, you too. The best. And I want Jordan. You the best. I will not leave this podcast okay. for anything. It's okay. Because I, also, I, we're trying to work towards monetization. This other podcast, I won't be able to really monetize it because of the circumstances. So, mm. or well, we we might be able to, but I won't see any of the money. It's a, it's a it's a situation. I'll tell you about it. When, mm. And once it's officially up, I'll tell the podcaster listeners about it. So this is the first place anyone is actually hearing about it publicly. Although I've not given any specific information, but mm-hmm. but. Yes, there's, yeah, nothing is pulling me from this podcast. In fact, mm-hmm. I am going to be working a lot of the time on this other podcast to promote this one. Like, okay. I want this one to succeed. And it's succeeding because we have people that email us. And I wish, <laughs> if anybody comments down below, we're trying to get it monetized, but the YouTube thing is sucking right yeah, now. Yeah, it's being a dick. It's telling they won't us. They respond to emails. They're being yeah. assholes. And it's just annoying. And they're telling us that the reason we're not getting monetized is because um, we're using reused content when the only content is our podcast that's just mm-hmm. our audio. So, like, it makes no sense. And they won't answer or do anything. I reapplied actually yesterday. Like, just to see what fucking happens. So, I don't know. It's confusing. If anybody knows how to help, please help. But, yeah. uh, Bottom line, uh, just always have something you're working on, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wait. What was the question again? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the question was, do, do you have a friend? Yes. No, I'm talking to the Kate. That's who asked oh, the question. Oh, this Katie. Katie. Yeah, this Katie. I would have called you Miss Johnson. Oh, you're right. You're yeah. right. Excuse me. Yeah. Anyways, oh, Katie asked us a question. You said <laughs> you could do it, all right? <laughs> all right, let's see. Let's see here. What did this question say? It said um, where you should stop being supportive of their goals if they aren't doing anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think pretty much everything Jordan said uh, covered it. I've, I've had a friend in my life before who has also consistently been like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then I'm like, oh, cool. Have you taken this step and this step and this step towards doing it? And they're like, well, no, but I'm really excited about this idea. And it's like, oh, cool. Like, what are you doing to bring that idea to life? Right. Well, nothing. But <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, yeah. So I, I can relate. And I, I never really get to a place where I, yeah, like like you said earlier, where I tell them not to do it or where I say, like, come on, man. Like, mm-hmm. I don't sit them down. Like, what the fuck are you even doing? But like, you know, I always am vaguely positive And the more they bring it up, I guess the more irritated I might B, if they're right. just saying the same thing for a month and they're not taking any steps forward. Mm-hmm. But I've never had a conversation where I said, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you're not doing anything. Because, you know, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. And if they're excited to share something with me, sure. But I do get low-key irritated. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That was good. Perfect answer. Yeah, so we did it. And we had our first <laughs> fight on the yes. podcast. <laughs> How dare you. <laughs> I love you so it's much. It's going to be okay. I love you so Jordan. <laughs> and speaking of love, duh, uh, let's go to our last question, which I think is objectively the best question. Go ahead. The question is, what is the objectively best ice cream flavor? Go! Mint chocolate chip ice cream chip. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, no uh, problem. I think chip. it's... It's any triple deluxe, like, cookie dough brownie ice cream that's, like, filled to the brim with, like, where it's almost more chunks of cookie and brownie than ice with cream a itself. Fork. Yeah, dude, I <laughs> eat it with a, with a fork. She eats weird. She eats ice cream with a fork. What kind of animal? No, I only eat my chunky ice cream with Whatever. a fork. Whatever. <laughs> because I, I like you. to, like, get those gobs of of deliciousness out of there so i have to like i have to stab my ice cream to get what i want out of it yeah it's ridiculous because like the spoon will just bend back when i'm trying to like get this hunk of chocolate out oh Mm. the tonight dough ice cream by ben and jerry's is my favorite and so that is the objectively best ice cream because it's filled with delicious gobby goodness of delicious baskin robbins mint chocolate chip is the goat of ice cream 
no one can I do tell like me mint otherwise. chocolate chip though. Yeah, mint chocolate chip like from Baskin Robbins. Goat. Fucking goat. No contest. Mint and chocolate objectively, go so well together. They do. They do. It's like how can you make something taste cold? Like it's mint mint to, like always tastes cold yeah. regardless of what it it's is. It's true. It always tastes cold. It's weird. This is very true. It's awesome. Okay, what's the objective worst ice cream flavor? The the red rum or rum shit. I don't know. Yeah, let's. What well, I don't know, like I, anything with fruit is bad to me because I'm allergic. Oh, that's to true. It. Yeah, so anything with fruit is. Yeah, like, you can't cherry Garcia fruit. sounds disgusting to me. Yeah, it's not that good. Like any like cherry ice cream stuff, I'm just kinda <clears> like. Yeah, that sounds disgusting. Oh, I know what's the worst ice cream. Oh yeah. Greek yogurt. It's not ice cream, but it sucks. You don't like Greek yogurt? No, it's all sour and weird. Well, I mean, yeah, it's sour and weird is good for you. I don't like it. It's gross. I mean, it's I'm good gonna, for your body. I'm not going to eat my broccoli, Dad. No, you need to eat your broccoli. That's Fuck how you get you. stronger. Fuck you. You're not you. my real dad. Yes, I am. Shit. Yes. You're right. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> this has yeah, been a very turntable ice cream. I actually love broccoli. Broccoli yes. ice cream. That's the worst ice cream, though. No, it's not. Milk and broccoli, gross. Well, yeah, milk and broccoli. Cheese, though. Cheese broccoli is good. Ooh, cheese is good. Well, I only like... uh. Like, hmm, I'm trying to think. Melted cheese broccoli. Have you ever had that? I have, and it's it can be like a kind of in the air thing. One thing I really love broccoli with though is like Chinese food. Like mm-hmm. cover my broccoli with like teriyaki sauce or like eel sauce. Oh. I've never had eel sauce, but oh my god, good. eel sauce is so good. What does it taste like? Oh, eel. it's like sweet. It's like a delicious sweet kiss on your tongue of yumminess. But what is it? Like what is what is it? Is it was literally like eel juice, like they skin eels and put it in there? No, it's like a brown sauce. It looks like teriyaki sauce. It's as thick as teriyaki sauce, but it tastes really sweet. Okay. Okay. It's on a lot of sushis. It's real good. It's real tasty. Um but yeah, best ice cream flavor. I guess we'll never agree there. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's what's the most medium ice cream flavor? Where you're just like, you know, if it's there I'll eat it, but it's not my first choice. Vanilla. Yeah. Yeah, vanilla. Okay. That's Hirasashi's favorite, so that's why we always make fun of him because he's like, oh, he's super vanilla. Vanilla is isn't? good. Yeah, vanilla, vanilla is vanilla. delicious. I don't know why people like complain about it. Like, Ugh, I don't like. Vanilla. Of the main three, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry, which is your go-to? Well, I'm allergic to strawberry, Katie. So, oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So, that you got a good point. Vanilla, because I like my yeah. white women. <laughs> so of course I, I like, like open chocolate because I like my chocolate mm. ice cream. Not yeah, see, and that's why we blend so well together. <laughs> hey! Dude, uh, chocolate ice cream's really good. <laughs> like, ever since, really my good friend though. brought up a thing about that. Uh, yeah. uh, what was it? He like made a, a tweet. Of it. it was a Boondocks tweet, and it was uh, one of those things where he can't say white woman normally anymore. And it's white just like, woman. yeah, white unlike women. District Attorney Dubois, who's married to a white woman. White <laughs> so woman. Like, I can't say it. Like, <laughs> white woman. So I just like, white. Cool. A whip. white woman. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah, but I like vanilla. Oh I would God. say, honestly, if it comes like, like that, if that I think vanilla. If it comes to donuts too, like because I love Ooh, chocolate yeah. and vanilla, but like I like chocolate and mm. uh, donuts, vanilla. But if you like say you can either have uh, a dozen vanilla or a dozen chocolate donuts, give me the dozen vanilla. I like the dozen vanilla because I just I like the. I really flavor. like a plain glazed with a shit ton of chocolate icing, and well, you mean like Krispy like Kreme chocolate. does? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like oh, you know what's really good? Fucking Seven Eleven. Seven Eleven has like Ooh. these donuts. Honestly, with, like, yeah. Gray- and they Gas put station fudge on them. donuts, no joke. I fucking love them. I don't care, man. They're, They're good. They're delicious. They're cheap and delicious. I don't know. If someone delicious. has a problem. I will fight someone over yeah, gas seriously. station donuts. Dude, if they put like fucking like a cake donut that's glazed, it had like cake frosting on it, like that, that shit is delicious. Oh. I don't care who says that. Like I see why Homer ate them so much. Yeah, dude. Yeah, they're, so they're fucking, fucking great. Yeah, I really like chocolate cake donuts. Vanilla donuts. Is a vanilla donut kind of just like a regular glazed? What do you or mean? is there a specific vanilla flavored donut? Because are you talking I, about plain? Do you mean like a vanilla cake donut or a vanilla donut donut or a vanilla glazed donut? Because there's like a variety. Okay, because like I guess my my question is kind of the phrasing of is a regular glazed donuts classified as a vanilla donut? Oh no no no, that's glaze. Glaze okay, by itself okay. is different. Like glaze is just a sugar. Glaze is literally like sugar that is liquefied 
and put to harden on a donut. So, like, that's why okay. it's got, like, that. Vanilla is just a completely different flavor. Like, that's the icing, the white vanilla icing. So, yeah. 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 Well, okay. Uh, well, actually, on this topic, I tried donut-flavored ice cream before. It wasn't that good. Yeah, isn't it? It's, like, such a bitch. You think that's going to be, like, the most yeah. orgasmic thing ever? But then, like, you yes. bite into it, it's just like, I mean... It's all it tastes right. weird. Yeah, it like, was donut weird. Donut flavor tastes good with donut texture. Ice cream flavor tastes good in most textures, but donut tech flavor with what ice cream texture. What texture not very does good. ice cream also come in? Um, you know, you could get like birthday cake, cake, or birthday cake ice cream. No, that's cake. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> I guess you could have like. I guess that's a good point. I don't have an answer. I don't <laughs> have words on the top of my head. Is there ice cream flavored cake? Ice cream cake. But that's ice cream and cake together. This that's fusion. True. It's oh, not like okay. a, like is there something I just you really go want like sweets? Because a milkshake doesn't count because a milkshake is just melted ice cream. Yeah, I guess there's nothing that's ice cream flavored. Everything just if it's ice cream, quote unquote flavored, it just has ice cream in it. So it's like yeah, um, exactly. It's just like oh, it's okay. ice cream. Yeah, I don't think there's some like oh, oh wait, hold on, pop tarts. Is pop tarts that way? <gasps> yes, they have a strawberry milkshake pop tart. Okay. And they also have a mint chocolate chip pop tart. But I don't know if that's yeah. ice cream related. Yeah, they have like uh. But it's not as fudge. good as ice oh, cream. Oh, hot fudge Sunday pop tarts are my favorite pop tart. Ooh, they're oh, they're yeah, so those good. Are, oh, oh yeah. Do you like to warm up your pop tarts or do you like to eat them raw? Oh yeah, I love a hot fudge Sunday pop tart warmed up. But honestly, I can eat them both. It's just like with broccoli, I'll eat it raw, bitch. But I'll eat it heated up. I'll do uh, anything. Yeah, I like oh raw my god, pop tarts. I prefer yeah, raw yeah, pop. Yeah. I don't like. I think I was talking to a friend about this the other day. I prefer my desserts cold. I don't like warm desserts. Like, warm yeah? desserts are just sort of like... Yeah, because, like, I was thinking about it. Like, warm chocolate chip cookies, while it may taste good, I prefer them, like, when they're chilled, and then you bite into it, and oh. it's nice, cold, and chewy. It and it's depends. Like, oh, fuck. When it comes to, like, cakes and pies and stuff, I like them cold. But when it comes to gooey cookies, I thought you liked I pies like pies warm. warm. No, I really like my, my grandma's pie that she makes. It's my favorite. It's a blueberry cold chilled pie. It's oh, yeah. like a cream. It's like a cream cheese and blueberry and like all this stuff. It's really good. But I do love a good hot cobbler and pie. I love them both ways. But I, but I can definitely have it cold. And I most of the time do. Oh god, yeah, cold oh, apple pie is really good. Oh, yeah, because I'm sweets. trying to think of like any dessert because it's just like okay, the cake better cold, brownies better cold, ice cream well, it's, duh, it's cold. Uh, freaking yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else is there? Cookies, cookies. Oh, I like cold. Cookies uh, are good cold. Like, ooh, those cookie ice cream sandwiches where there's ice cream in between the cookies. Yeah, yeah, those things are orgasmic. Those oh. things are, I have like a. Have shit you ever made a s'more thing. out of cookies? I've had s'mores since I was ten. Dude. Wait, wait, rice crispy treats. What do those those time. count as? Ooh, those are pretty okay warm, but I like those. I like those chilled. A room temperature. Those are nice chilled. Like, yeah, how yeah, do they but taste if room you, temperature. Because mm, I've never had good. I'm trying to think. When was the last time I had I've rice? I've had Krispie rice krispie treats? treats in most forms, and they're pretty. They're pretty good all around. I haven't had like a bad rice krispie treat. Like there isn't a form of rice krispie treat where I was like, eh. Uh, a s'more. You know, I have. I. I don't think I've had s'more. Ooh, a forever. s'more on a rice krispie treat would be yummy. I've never had. I don't think I've had that. Oh, what had, were those fucking? Mm, though, you remember those rice yeah? krispie treats with chocolate like oh, God, stuff on yes. them? I can't remember. Oh, oh my god! I remember I used to eat a lot of them as a kid. But I can't remember. Or Dunkaroos; Dude. those were good too. Oh those yeah, were, those are those were room temperature though. Yeah, like most you know, room temperature dessert. I mean, I just love dessert, so I want to hear eat something it. I used to do. When I was a yes. little kid. I was oh my god! Like, this is probably why I was such a chubby little kid with asthma. But like every time, like um, because I I have an affinity for baking people. I love baking, but um, I would oh, always yeah. fuck myself up because like. I love cake frosting, and so I put the cake frosting in the oh. fridge, and I would let it, like, get cold overnight, <gasps> and I would just get a spoon, get a and I would spoon! just, like, eat that shit I still when do I was that. watching. Yeah, shit. I used to do that all the time. I tried to do it when I was, like, 25. I couldn't do it as an oh adult. It, like, fucked up my stomach so bad. I did that, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, it fucks with you. Oh, uh, something I've been doing recently that's actually, like, I guess a little healthy. Um, when I was at Zach's... Uh, he had some. He has a lot of Nutella because he loves Nutella. No, and Nutella I, is fucking delicious. That is dude, a food I love of the Nutella. gods. And like, um, I think we had had a party at some point, and somebody left a bunch of like uh, wheat uh, peanut butter crackers, 
And so I was just like, fuck it. I want a pack of crackers. But wait a minute. What if I made it better? So I put the crackers out on a plate. It's just like wheat crackers with peanut butter in between them. And I got a gob of Nutella and would spread it on top of the crackers. Mm. And then I would eat it. It's heavenly. Why don't you dip the, like, I like to dip it in the Nutella. Well, I have to have my own jar well, to do this. Because the jar, yeah, yeah the jar, like, the Nutella is so in there, it would just make my hands too messy. And I wouldn't be able to get the proper amount like on there without the hands. cracker breaking. <laughs> well, no, because I, what I wanted to do, I would get, like, a big gob on a spoon, and I would just rub the fuck out of it onto a cracker. So it was, like, it was just, like, ugh. It would have so much Nutella on it. So when I would take a bite, it would just be a bite of Full on Nutella, but then like the crunchiness of the wheat cracker. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it's really good. Have I you ever eaten it. a melted chocolate bar? Like you're like, oh shit, I had a chocolate. I have. I've melted. had a Kit Kat several times. Situation that was melted. Like, have you ever it. had a situation where you like you ate it, but you like ate it too close to a bathroom? So someone sees like you. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like it's just yeah, like yeah. <laughs> I've actually no, I haven't had somebody actually say something. But as a kid, I would have those thoughts, and I'd be like, tee hee hee hee. I ate my shit. It was like, what did you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you do? (laughs) You ate Mr. Hanky. I think everyone as a children has, like, those LOL thoughts. It's like that Dumb and Dumber movie where the guy, like, he went into the bathroom and, like, he he was trying to clean his pants off. And he was, like, he had this chocolate bar in his back pocket and it melted. And so, like, he started, like, freaking it. He put it down his pants because he was trying to just clean off his pants because it got super wet. And he's like, what the fuck is this? And he licked it. And he was like, oh, it's chocolate. And so he starts licking it. And he's like, oh, fuck, I'm going to get my pants messy. So he tries to wipe it on, like, the door and like in the window he starts wiping it on like the mirror and the glass i remember the yeah because he's at like the fancy house yeah he's at the fancy house and then bob sackett comes in and he's like he's shit all over the place he's shit, shit all, all over, my over the place <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's so, crap the dad should have known that when they walked in there it wasn't shit because you would have smelled it if it was yeah shit. exactly like, oh, that reminds the, yeah. me. That's this is horrible. This is a horrible segue. But like when I used to work at Burger King, <laughs> this is yeah. one of the stories from Burger King that I always oh just have God. horror stories about. Uh, so like um, when I was working there one day, I was cleaning. I was doing um uh, I, what was my job? Oh yeah, dining room. Dining room is my job. So like yeah. my job was the bathroom, cleaning the dining room. And then, like, the, the soda machines and stuff like that. And so, like, I'm cleaning, like, the soda machines. And, like, I see this a family come in. And uh, there's this, like, poor little uh, mentally handicapped girl. I'm like, oh, okay. Look, yeah. whatever. She goes in. And so I see her go into the bathroom. And then I see her, like, pants just drop. And then her mother pushes her in, like, no, no. And then I'm like, okay. And oh so, like, I God. walk back. And I, like, go to the, like, tell the people, like, dude, I just saw the weirdest thing. So this mom brought her kid in. And the kid dropped their pants and just like, the, she like pushed it like, no, no. And I was like, wouldn't that be some crazy crap if like she just, you know, did that in the bathroom or something like that? And so like, I'm like, okay, whatever. And then they were like, yeah, that'd be some shit. And then like five minutes later, I'm in the back end stuff. And then like, um, I hear, uh, Jordan, come here, please. I'm like, yeah, what's up? So, um, and the woman's just like standing there like, I am so, so sorry. I'm like, oh, what, what's going on? I had that, that look like a Gretzko had when Haida asked her yeah. if she was pregnant. And I was like, oh, Lord. And so I, I go into the bathroom, and I'm just like, no, no, this isn't happening. Oh, There's no. shit all over the fucking floor, the mirror. I don't know. They're on the sink. What the, on the fuck? fucking And I don't know how this transpired. But, like, she had somehow, when the girl got into the toilet, like, it just came out like a fountain and the mom was trying to clean it up and so she tried to get something from this like uh one of the napkin roller things out there and so like, i see this and i'm just like why is it on the mirror though like why the is it on the mirror the and the kid like put the handprints and shit and so i just go back there and everyone's just staring laughing at me and then i just go into like the walk-in where the freezer meat is and i just yell fuck and i just like yell out big ass fuck and then i go oh and i have to spend God. the time cleaning it up and it was so disgusting and annoying. And that smell, like, once the smell hit, it was just like... Oh, yeah. Like, once I opened the door, it was like a green mist just came out. And I was just like, this is... Yeah. Why? Why? You Why? You had a mop, and right? So, yeah, it was... And the mom was just like, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. And she's like, you're so sorry. Why did you fucking clean it up fully? Like, this is... God damn it. But, oh, uh, yeah. Jesus that was Christ. A, that was that was a story. I have many stories from Burger King. Tons of horrible ones. Uh. That sounds accurate. <sighs> Actually, on that note, I know we're telling really weird stories. 
There was when I went to sports first when I was a little kid. Uh-huh. There was a situation one time, and no one could figure. No one came forward with who did it. Mm-hmm. So it's a mystery to this day. Although we had theories, because there was this girl that was very like eccentric uh-huh. that we went to daycare with, and we were like early middle school, late elementary school. I can't remember our exact age. Mm-hmm. It was the summertime. We were all there. Like, and, you know, the girls would go into the girls' locker room slash bathrooms to change for swimming. And, like, the guys would go into the guys' area. And then, you know, we'd all go swimming and stuff. Mm-hmm. And one day, I wasn't there to witness the writing on the wall, literally. But mm-hmm. I was not allowed to go into the restroom one day after swimming, like, for a little bit or something. They were like, you oh, know, God. hey, we're going to have to keep you out here. Um, me and, like, a bunch of other kids. There's been an incident in the oh, bathroom. God. And, like, um... I was like, well, what happened? What happened? And, like, the counselors were freaking out. And, like, eventually I kind of heard from, like, somebody. Like, because I don't think the counselors sat us all down to tell us about it. I think they just kind of cleaned it up and were like, fucking Christ. Someone had taken their shit and used it like a pencil to write on the walls in was, the bathroom. In, in the girls' bathroom. I don't know. I didn't get to see it. <laughs> they cleaned it up. But they had written, like, on the walls and then, like, thrown it and, like... I don't even know what it says. How you know what? Like honestly, I, just, I don't understand I just don't. how people write with shit. So like, cause this is like, okay, so you have to stick your hand in the fucking water. Assuming, assuming like if I can just like go Detective Holmes Jack's Blade mode for a second, you like stick yeah, your yeah, hand yeah. in the water. You would take the poop out. And poop is like I, I again I not touch poop besides my dogs when I'm picking it up. But it's like yeah. if it's like that sort of consistency. If you try to like use your finger to draw with it, like I I just I don't see how that makes like no. I don't know how they could get to this point where they wanted to do this. I mean, kids are kids, I guess. Like they're gonna fucking do weird shit. But like it was crazy. Apparently there was a lot of it because that because like apparently they had to do a lot of cleaning up, and I didn't get to hear. Or if I heard the full story, I don't remember it because it was so long ago. I just remember it was a whole debacle, and they never figured out who did it. So, like, that person was a sneaky, like, a yeah, sneaky sneak. Sick. Like, they that got away with it, and up. it was in the girls' room. It could have been a little boy that just snuck in the boy in the girls' room. I don't know. But we, I had a suspicion there was this girl. I, I think I know who it was. I don't think they ever. What what words do they, do you know what words they wrote? No, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. Like, if it was said to me or not, like, I just remember being told, like, hey, you got to be out here. Like, there's a situation. And, like, somebody was, like, writing on the walls with their stuff. And then they threw it. And, like, it was everywhere. And it was, like, oh, my God. Like, it wasn't just, like, whoopsie, didn't make it to the toilet or anything like that. It was, like, very, like, splattered and writing. And it was, like, whoa. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I wish I would have known. Like, Mm -hmm. because that would have been a great story if I had more details. But, you know, it's a memory that I have. Hold, that I hold dear to me, and whoever you are, mystery pooper, I hope you're doing well. That was horrible. Like they were just gra- like that. Is, like, that is kid. Like that kid must have been. Some must have happened. Where I just like, don't know I how they picked. got away with it. I wasn't yeah. picked properly for this contest that I had to do, so I'm gonna go make this hell for everyone else here. Like or yeah. something. Was there like? All right. So I know you don't remember it, but do you remember anyone like getting shafted like during your like camp thing? Like oh god, yeah. Well. I'm mad because of this. I'm going to get back at him. Do you remember any of this? Like, oh. I don't. Like, I just know we were all just kind of, like, huddled together. And, like, so whoever did it either snuck back out. They had either had to wash their hands and come back out Mm -hmm. or, like, done it, like, right when everybody was leaving to get out, to get away with it. Or they would have had to, like, like ran to another area of the camp or I don't know like I don't Mm -hmm. it wasn't like a camp it's like sports first and it's called boys and girls no it's not called boys and girls now it's called the YMCA now Mm -hmm. but it was a but it was called sports first when this happened and like I just don't know how like because they were probably trying to keep us all together so that you know they could like try to narrow it down like okay who went to the bathroom etc but like I don't I don't think they caught I don't think they caught him or her most likely her and that's Ugh. crazy. It's crazy. They're listening to this podcast, petting a cat right now. Like <laughs> they're just like, <laughs> uh, like the mystery they're... of the mystery pooper, and like, Ugh. 
we just kind of forgot about it moved on because you know i'm a little kid i just want to like oh yeah i'm gonna go swimming like i don't mm-hmm. know <laughs> and yeah i you know i think that's a good place to end today's episode yeah what a shitty end <laughs> oh got him jordan where can they find you They can find me at Connie Day on all of the, all of the places and Angle and Kirby Productions and Dr. Crafty. Woo! All right. Ooh. All right. Remember, now, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Remember to follow us on our social media, WeirdFlexPod, and or email yes. us at WeirdFlexButOKPodcast at gmail.com. Hey. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you know whenever Yay. we upload. Yay! YouTube so you stuff. all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, like I always say, do it. Calm. Booyah on. Booyah. Moment high. Moment high. We did it. All right. Bye. Get in the toilet. Don't, oh my god.